Hey everyone, Sam here at Model Chili Scale Models, and here is Bendai's Death Star 2, which is a relatively recent kit. I've had it for a little while, but uh, this is um, an example of their, their recent trend of making really small scale battleships, spaceships, and in this case a battle station. So I think this is going to be just an exercise of painting, because the building is going to be fairly simple. But let's start by having a look inside the box. So we've got a little display stand. And screw number one, with the back of the Death Star. And some construction detail, ready for a nice wash and some highlighting. And sprue number two, so looks like the, the core, more levels, and the front of the most famous side with the, uh, the laser dish. Right, so let's get building. Okay, so as I'm building this up, it's clear that there's going to be quite some difficult to reach places once this is all put together um, for painting. So what I'm going to do is just spray all of the internal construction parts first. So uh, parts like this and this and that's another big one. So I'll spray these separately and then once they're all painted I'll start putting them together. But first I'm going to prime them using Tamiya's Fine Surface Primer from a can. Okay, so for the base colour, it's um, the age-old dilemma of do you paint it to match the studio model or do you paint it to match how it looked on screen? Now from what I've seen from reference photos of the studio model, it looks like all of the internal decking and construction was a very similar colour to the external. But of course it looked a lot darker in the shadows and all the lighting they used. So I'm thinking I'm going to start with a darker colour and then see how that goes. So for that I'm going to be using Vallejo Model Air Black Grey 71055. Okay, so now that the paint has been left to dry, I'm going to highlight all of these raised areas along the edge of all of these platforms, or levels, just with a bit of lighter grey, in this case, a Vallejo Model Air Dark Ghost Grey. And I'm just going to carefully paint over the edge. One. And then I'll probably just clean it up a little bit later with the black grey over the top if I go too far. Basically, just want all of this fine detail to pop out to the eye. In theory, I could have gone the other way in painting the whole thing, the lighter grey first, and then using a wash to go into the uh, recessed areas with a darker colour. 
but in this case I've just decided to do it the other way around. Okay, so with that grey down, I'm going to do the same thing again, but with a lighter grey, this time light gull grey. Not over the whole thing, just in little parts, just to give it a bit of um, bit of variation. Now for the next colour I'm going to use just a little bit of uh, rust. As the um, studio model shows that you know, there are some parts that are coloured in some sort of coppery brown colour. I don't think it's actual rust, it's just uh, all the raw construction that's going on. And now just with a bit of light grey, I'm going to paint the uh, core structure that runs down the middle here. And now as a final detail, I'm going to apply a little bit of dark grey wash into all of the, uh, well not all of the recessed areas, some of them, because again I just want to keep it fairly random, not so uniform, so I'm just going to do sections of different levels. Do for that one. Alright, so with all of the internal parts painted, it's now time to move on to the surface areas. And as before, I'm just going to start by priming these up with a bit of Tamiya surface primer. So before I apply the main colour, I'm going to do a base coat of uh, black grey. And now for the main colour I'm going to use Dark Ghost Grey 71120.
Now before I do any additional painting, I'm going to coat all of the surface areas with a layer of Tamiya's TS13 Clear. Okay, so the gloss clear coat has gone down. Now the thing with the Death Star is that all of the um, recessed areas you can see on this model are actually a lighter colour than all of the raised panels. Whereas normally I'd just put a dark wash on this to bring in all the detail. But as you can see, especially from this painting, that all of the um, smaller lines that go around the panels and especially around the trench are all a lighter colour, so I'm going to try and recreate that by mixing the uh, base colour that I used, dark ghost grey, one to one with a bit of white grey just to lighten it up a bit. And just with a fine brush by hand, I'm just going to paint in. All of the uh, recessed areas. Now I'm not too worried about being too precise at this point. And that's one of the reasons I put down the gloss coat. Just so that I can go over this with a bit of acrylic thinner after this is dried up and cleaned up. Yeah, we're of um gone over the lines really. And I'm just using some pale blue grey just to uh, colour in some of the different panels. And now I'm just using the black grey colour again for the um, subsurface details. And as before, I'm just going to highlight the dark grey with the um, the main grey colour. All right. So at this stage, I think it's time to start putting it all together. So then I can. Uh, Start to see if there's any major paint mismatches or um, gaps that I need filling. So it's just little bits like this that don't seem too obvious at first that it's going to be visible, but just in case it is, just need to just cover that up.
Okay, so that's gone together fairly well. I've got um, this plate here is a little bit loose, it wants to spring out a little bit, so it's creating a bit of a gap there. I can't quite squeeze it into position. And yeah, there are a couple of noticeable gaps. Let's uh, I'll think about how to clean those up. Now there's also just a gap right right down in there which hasn't been painted so I'll just need to go and touch that up but apart from that everything else looks covered up and painted oh, there's a little bit just through there another bit through right, right through the back into that wall through there um, but that's okay you can't really see that much but yeah overall um Looking good so far. And so now I'm just going to paint some uh, different coloured wedges in the dish. All right, so I've finished all of the uh, paint touch-ups. So now all I need to do is apply a protective coat of Tamiya Flat Clear. All right, so here it is all finished up with the clear coat on, and that's given it a nice matte finish. And yeah, overall, I'm really happy with how it's come out. It's been a really quick weekend build. I started it on Friday night, and now it's Sunday afternoon, so good 48 hours on and off. Uh, to complete this so it's a nice little kit to do in between bigger projects and yeah the construction wasn't that difficult um, I didn't really do any customizing it's a shame about the large gaps there but um, you know overall you're going to be looking at it from this angle so it's not really much of a big issue and I'm fairly happy with how the panelings come out it wasn't as um, crisp or as clean as say masking but doing it by freehand was a lot quicker it allowed me a lot more freedom to do it on the fly and I think in essence I've captured the kind of the detailed panelling and checkered appearance of the Death Star 2. Uh, masking all of that up would have just taken far too long and probably would have driven me mad by the end of it. So yeah, it's a little bit a little bit rough in places, but overall I think it looks uh, looks alright. And I'm really happy with how the interior Detailing has come out. Um, you can just catch a glimpse of it in there. Yep, really happy with the colours, the little specks of bronze, and uh, the dry brushing, and a little bit of wash. And yeah, so uh, there's really not much more to say about it, really. It's just a, a fun little project, and yeah, if, actually, if I was to build it again, one tip I would uh, have is to, if you're going to paint it especially, just paint everything, especially the surfaces that you don't think are going to be seen because, yeah, you can see the un <laughs> you could see the unpainted bits right in all of those deep recessed areas. So I've had to do quite a bit of touching up with a brush, just jabbing it in there. So yeah, like all of the internal pieces, make sure you paint both sides um, if you're going to paint it and yeah and I probably would glue it all together just to make it really solid and so then I could go back and fill in some of these gaps without the uh, the surface parts moving around too much so that could fix in place and then uh, paint over it or sand it back or something like that so 
um, even though it is sort of pushed together I couldn't really take apart a lot of these surface pieces to glue them back on because they were just um they just kind of snapped in place and I didn't want to risk breaking anything trying to get them apart so it is what it is um, definitely a few tips for anyone wanting to build this but yeah overall I'm really happy with how it's come out and it'll make a nice little uh, display piece so as always, uh, I'm keen to, keen to know what you guys think. Please leave a comment below. And uh, check out some of the photos I'll post on my Instagram and Facebook pages. I'll put links to those in the description. And thanks for watching. So until next time, I tell you, this station will be operational as planned. <laughs>